beautiful people, more life, more blessings. You know the vibes, we outside. We back at you, do it for the love. One more time, you know me, your host, Eric Buddy Davis. You know I got my brother in the building. Spit fire. You know the vibes. As always, we're feeling good, feeling great. We hope you're feeling good and feeling great as well. Cause you know the vibes, man. This is all about wrapping up 2023. I know I didn't say it like I normally say it, but this episode is normally, this episode will be a little looser. <laughs> than what it uh, typically is. I was definitely ready to get on you. Like, you know, you usually come out with a <laughs> lot more energy. You see the drinks on the table. We already oh. got started early. So with Buddy a little sluggish, I'm definitely carried away for him. But like you said, it's the 2023 recap. That's we got nice. a lot to get, to get into in an hour. And hopefully we cover a lot, you know what I mean? Because we talked about this right. episode leading up to it. And there's so many different things we got to cover. So. Whatever we do forget, make sure y'all drop it in the comments. But we're gonna give y'all the official Do It For The Love countdown heading into 2024. And I feel great, man. Checking your temperature. How you feel? Well, I feel great. And I wanna let y'all know that we're feeling good, feeling great, feeling great, feeling good. And we hope you are too. Yes, sir. I'm not drunk yet, but I hope to be by the end of this episode. We're gonna have some fun tonight. Definitely tips. My temperature's good, Brody, man. It's no, uh, we are almost through another 365, man. Every day is a blessing. You know me and how I rock, man. I'm super, super just happy on a day-to-day -day basis. And to almost make it through another year. Yeah. Once again, we're almost there. I feel beautiful, man. Nothing to complain about. I'm really excited about the next year. Yeah. And um, how about you? What's your I'm feeling blessed, um, thankful. Like I always say every episode, um, you know, we started a great show that we concepted way back in January. And Cheers to us. be at the end of the year where we eight episodes in almost, seven to eight episodes in. Just about. And, you know what I mean? It's just a blessing, man. It's everything we thought it would be. Right. You know, we who's counting? Look at us. Yeah, who's counting, right? <laughs> it's one of them good things that me and Buddy actually, like, you know, chuckle and laugh about. We like, damn, we at this episode already? But that's how passionate we are about this. And that's what you could expect going into 2024. We got an exciting list of guests coming up um, from some dope female entrepreneurs yes, to male yes. entrepreneurs. Yes. Um, you know, and some good stories that I can't wait to get into. But as we uh, as we said, we're in this 2023 recap and there's so much to unpack. So how can we get started tonight? How you feeling? Well, before we go off the rails and you know go off the grid a little bit, we're gonna start off how we normally start off a show with I mean, a title. almost forgot the t what is the title? Yes, 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 yes. You know we gotta stay on script for people that's not watching us to see this energy live. For those that's listening, tonight's energy and episode topic is gonna be for the love of life. We're wrapping up another year, and as usual, you want to make your New Year's resolutions, you want to go into the next year trying to say, how can I be better than I was in 2023? How can I do that or this? But at the end of the day, to us, for the love of life is pretty much an opportunity for us to say how grateful we are, how thankful we are, how blessed we are. As so just said, starting this podcast is something that we both wanted to do. It's something that we executed. It took time. It took execution. It took focus. It took using our resources. It took a lot of things to make come to life. <laughs> life. For the love of life. So that's pretty much what we want to talk about. Just how thankful we are. How grateful we are. Going into the next year and also leave a message for the young individuals that's watching us. The parents that watch us. Any people that's coming from any field in life. You know, never give up. Because life is Beautiful. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to all of the families that have lost people through, you know, whether it be regular mm -hmm. mother nature situations, you know, things we can't control or whether it be tragic situations. I saw on the news recently that Baltimore was at 258 murders um, before they ended the year. And, you know, that's well short of what they was last year, 300 plus. And even though that's something to clap about and and be proud about 200 deaths is a lot. And that don't even include, you know, all of the older people that just end up leaving this earth through that's you not know, natural, natural deaths. Causes. That's all homicides. You know, yeah, homicides. Yeah, homicides. Just yeah, gotcha. crazy things, man. So I'm thankful to be here, you know, and I hope that if you watching, you're thankful to be here, whether you've been through a lot of stressful situations, because we all have been. You know, a lot of people look at our lives 
on social media and you don't get to see what's really behind the mask or behind the curtain. So we all going through it. And I'm be the first to tell you, like, you know, everything ain't perfect, but I am truly blessed to be here. And I just wanted to send a shout out to anybody that lost somebody this year. I went through a tough three or four years losing best friends, close family members. And thankfully I haven't lost anybody this year, you know, that was super close to me, but I did see a lot of people lose family members. So just right. sending y'all uh, my praise. But uh, going into a topic about life and death, you know, what do you feel like this culture shift is for this year? You know, to me, every year it kind of presents different energies that we have in the air. You know, of course, the Trump years when we saw the, uh, the building get insurrected and, you know, torn to shreds. To me, that was a year of just hostility and no care for law. Right. What do you feel like the energy was for this year? Man, good question. I would say the energy for 2023 is kind of like that, chaotic. I feel like this was the year of no boundaries, no standards, no anything that's... You know what's crazy? Because I got to check myself even saying that. A lot of the times we project the energy from the news sources that we sign up to, whether it's who you follow or what you watch. Fox, CNN, Instagram people, whoever you follow on any social media network. And that kind of dictates what you kind of say the year is about and what you feel. So I can say a lot of different things, but if I had to say the worldly view from what I get from socials and all of that, it's just almost like a lack of care. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's so loose out here. Everything is oversaturated. And it's crazy, I feel like my age is kicking in. Because it's like being 36, I used to sit and look at things and be like, just let life be, just be great. And that's how I live. But at the same time, it's like when you take a look at what's really going on in our neighborhoods, when you take a look at what's going on in the school systems, when you take a look at what's going on just in the workforce and the different tiers of families and everything, it's kind of sad mm -hmm. when you really, really think about it. And it's a lot of success stories too. So you know me, I always try to focus on the success, but it's easy to like pinpoint it's not easy to pinpoint the few good stories it's easier to like always throw at you what's wrong with the world just like the news if you turn on the news in baltimore you're gonna see 250 deaths or 315 deaths regardless of the good stuff that's going on in the city all of the creatives that's working out here and all of the beautiful things so that answer is kind of tough for me because it's like I can say it's we in two wars. We're not in two wars, but technically we are, because I feel like America's a part of everything. Yeah. We play a side in almost everything that's going on in this place. Yeah. Period. So <clears throat> I want to say that the state of the world is almost how it's always been. People are trying to stay where they are, and some people are trying to strive to be great, and other people are holding people back, mm -hmm. and it's the Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. I almost said that written in my intro, but I'm just trying to be off the script tonight and be loose. But like I literally said, welcome to surviving the number 365 of the Hunger Games. Because yeah. that's what it is out here. It's a war going on outside. No man or woman to save from, day in and day out. And uh, we're going to get loose tonight and all of that, but when I talk for the love of life, it's literally people dying in countries that we don't care about probably and we don't know about but literally on a day in and day out it's a war mm -hmm. and we living in bliss i know america's numbers are down in education we're down in so many different avenues and we're still the best some way somehow we still everyone wants to be here mm -hmm. regardless if you want to go vacation and live somewhere else so it's like how bad is it really yeah so you know it's like it's kind of crazy when you just think about it in yeah. a very worldwide way which i'm trying to look at it instead of locking it on one thing yeah. I think that uh, the crazy thing that I see in the shift of the energy in 2023 and hopefully it don't carry into 2024 is how we hold comedians, uh, politicians, athletes, all of these people that we look at in a high level to these standards to what they say on camera and what they do in their households. But we don't do that same thing to our own households. Like, or friends. You know what I mean? We constantly, this castle culture has exploded and everybody walking on eggshells to, um, you know, be very scared about what they say or, or how they want to express things. But like I said, in our own household, it just, it boggles my mind to see how we, we do teenagers and a lot of these kids out here who have completely just, you know, took the laws and, and said, fuck them and do whatever they want to do. And then the parents don't have those open conversations with their children. You know, we're in a real crazy culture where also negativity is 
you know, breeding success. It sells. You know what I'm saying? It's like this show right here, we we made a promise that we wasn't going to dig too much into a lot of negative stuff and be more so centered towards taking the positive things in life and in people's careers and highlighting that because we know we could quickly get up here and talk shit about people, which we do here and there, but yeah. that's not the we main do it focus. With love. Yeah, and we don't, but we're not gonna strictly chase negativity to build this show up. We'd rather keep organic viewers that really like positive stories and really like to hear the real about what's going on today. I love that. And that's what we're gonna always be. We're gonna always be authentic. We're gonna show up, be organic for y'all. But at the same time, sometimes you have to touch on things that, regardless of how you try to speak on it, it has negative connotation behind it. It's not really a lot of ways to kind of twist some of the stuff that we may discuss and talk about. So it's never us really trying to shoot someone down. But I think you grown adults that we may speak on, y'all know what y'all putting on social media. Y'all know what y'all putting out in the world. We don't live with y'all, know y'all. So anything we speak on, you, your team, or someone in the world, put that out there. Yeah. And we just trying to understand why you may love that attention. That's why we always say, for the love of something, because why do you do it the way you do it? When we say for the love of life, we speaking from it from the context of our life point, our viewpoint. The way you may love life and the way you may do something. I always have this conversation with people. A person that's doing evil work, what we may see as evil work, they may actually think they're doing good. Or they're doing what they got to do to feed their family. Or they're doing what they got to do in survival mode. Mm -hmm. So I try not to judge. But at the same time, I do think where we may lack as a society, we got to have some type of round table of a real system of accountability and judgment. That's the only way our youth will stay engaged and do stuff. That's the only way adults will do what they're supposed to do and grow and prosper. And we not be stuck and in the mud and we can get it out the mud, but don't stay in it. Just like, you know, just try to keep on being great. 2023 is behind us down there and 2024 is about getting more. So, we do all, that. Yeah, we all, at, at the end of the year, you know how we do tonight. It's going to be a night where you're looking in the mirror and you reflect and you think about the good and the bad you did. And if you one of them people that's looking at all of the things you've done and you like, damn, I didn't do some dirt or I didn't do some shiesty stuff, it's never too late to change. The one suggestion that I would give you is start to surround yourself with more positive people or people that constantly, that in your eyes earlier throughout the year, you might have been like, this person on my ass, they constantly give me a hard time. You actually probably should lock in with those people to start the year off. People that really actually want to see you do better in life and actually have see the real good and the potential when you get your, them negative people out your circle man that's got to be the goal for a lot of people tonight heading into this new year you know so we as we count down later on in the show think about them positive things as each number is said and really think about the positive things you can positive impact that you can make on friends culture and family and all of that no squares in your circle and if they are in your circle get them in shape yes. more life more blessings so let's move on yeah our sponsor highlight for the night you have on the hood. I think it's only right that you uh, talk a little talk. We are going to sponsor Highlight Tunnel Vision. I'll quickly say, went to Towson University with the owner and CEO of Tunnel Vision. We hope to have him on as a guest. So I'm not going to get too much into that, but I want to say it is a what? A what? What is Tunnel Vision? I was about to say it, but I think you should break it down. Tunnel Vision is a black owned sport and apparel company that creates nothing but classics when it comes to the uniform and sport and apparel culture. Talk to them. So what we do, I'm the lead designer as I spoke about in the first episode, but I'd like to shout out our CEO, Kyle Williams. Uh, he thought about Tunnel Vision and the name for Tunnel Vision through a dream that he had. And I, I, you know, it's crazy when stories like these come up because everything starts with a dream. And it's crazy that our motto for mm -hmm. Tunnel Vision is chase your dream. So we constantly promote that message throughout the branding. We've been lucky enough to service Little League teams, collegiate teams. We've done celebrity games um, and anybody that's looking for, for cool clothing. We've even recently secured a contract with uh, the NSA, which is located up here in Fort Meade. And if you don't know, we have a nonprofit 501c3 company. I mean, that company nonprofit organization, which is called the Tr Chase Your Dreams Initiative. Recently, we just did a toy drive, get back in Severn at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, in partnership with the IHAP Foundation, ACDS, the Anne Arundel County uh, 
government, I mean, a lot of partners, thank, thank you all if I forgot you, but pretty much our mission over the last few years have been not only to service, you know, sport in the Pearl Company, but to also help the community. Uh, we had, with our nonprofit, we've been focused on leading the youth through sporting programs, which we have a boxing program going on right now at the Boys and Girls Club. We also, not only with the toy give back, we did a turkey drive, giving back turkeys. Uh, we do the turkey bowl every year, which helps, you know, get a lot of food. So, I mean, it's just a lot of different things that Kyle has spearheaded in the community in Anne Arundel County. And also over this last year, 2023, we combine what I do with the artwork and now we facilitate murals. We've been able to put two murals at the Boys and Girls Club. We have some really big projects coming up out of state, a couple in Compton, which I'm excited to get into, home of Nipsey Hustle. So we got, we got one coming up in uh, Indiana, Chicago, looking at some stuff in Baltimore. So, we, you know, Tunnel Vision has constantly focused on not only giving back to the community, but expanding. It's a black company that any black entrepreneurs or upcoming successful people could look at and, and mold their company after. So I just want to salute Kyle Williams and the staff at Tunnel Vision, Mel Pemberton, my man Fat Man, and they're all of the account managers doing their thing. Just a successful company that you could check out. Check out the website www.thetunnelvision.com and at The Tunnel Vision on all social media platforms. The mood I'm in tonight, I ain't gotta see nothing else, man. Let's take a shot of Tunnel Vision, man. Let's do it. Let's go. And yeah, this is a chaser. So, moving on. Let's go. So, love tonight, love. For all of our listeners, first time listeners, you know what the vibe is, man. You know, we like to not say the H A T E word on our show. So, this is a moment where we speak on things that we may not favor like other things that we do favor. So, love to not love. You wanna go first, my brother? You wanna go first? Definitely kick it off. Kick it um, off. I love to not love these people with all of these allegations coming out lately. <laughs> you know, I don't want to diminish anybody who really wants to let their voice be heard for something that they've been through. Right. But it leaves us out here a little puzzled when you, all, a lot of people coming out 10, 15, 20 years later this really been haunting you that bad? Come on, man. I mean, and then it's a trend of people doing it back to back to back. I mean, you you mentioned some of the names. Who were some of the people that came up? Oh, man, just tonight I heard, uh, well, that was more so abuse, I think. Uh, something from the 90s with Method Man. And it kicked off the year with Russell Simmons. If I'm uh, well, Russell's actually been had allegations for years now, to be quite honest. But his, his highlight of the year was his actual daughter and Kamora going at him. But... That's, man, this has been a messy year. year. But uh, I will agree with you on that. It's like, it's just so hard. You put no timetable on trauma, but it's like, man, like, you got your ass beat in 92. And now, Cassie, just or whoever, no names, made you feel like I'm, it's time. It's just, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I don't want to ever, ever say what someone feels or doesn't feel. So it's, it's a tough topic, but... Yeah, I love to not love the confusion of it all. What you got? I'll agree with you on that. Um, I'm going to go with the resolution police. I am not a fan of you damn dream killers. Let someone do what they must do on December 31st at 1159. If they said that they're not going to drink on January 1st, and you know for a fact that they've drunk or taken a drink every day this year, let them dream for only if an hour. Let them be great. Don't be that person. You can be a negative Nancy on any day of the year. Just don't do it on December 31st. Let someone be great and answer the New Year will hope. And when they mess up, if you really love them, you'll be right there to pick them. The crazy thing about the resolution watches is they'll watch somebody else's faults to try to catch them more than they will worry about the shit that they need to change about their life. I don't think they care. I don't think they make resolutions. I think, them, I think people like that. They, <laughs> their resolution is to catch as many people fucking up their resolution. Yeah, it's just waiting. It's somebody waiting for Tyler Perry to make a mistake. Yeah. It's someone in the dark just always waiting for somebody. Like that light-skinned dude I don't even know who he is is making another allegation. He keep on threatening to say the name. People want it to be Tyler Perry. It's like, you know, if you read comments, bro, and it's like, and people are saying, like, it ain't him. And it's like, no, nah, it's him. It's yeah. like, it's just it's sickening at the end of the day. But you got another one? Another lesson on love? Uh, these teachers that's out here having sex with students, man. I've been going on for a while now. Yo, another a <laughs> black lady recently uh, teaching who went viral for doing one of those TikTok dances with her students. 
you know, she recently got caught that she was having sexual relations with one of <laughs> one or two students at the school, and it was bought. It was noted that in the video that went viral with her dancing, right. that she probably was wearing the boy that she was messing with shorts because in the video she was wearing some basketball shorts from the high school, so she had to probably get them from the boy she was talking to, but. Not to just single her out, over the last few years, I'm constantly seeing adults deal with children who are underage, and as an adult who works with children in a lot of different um, programming, I just don't understand, I can't wrap my mind around, what is the overall goal that y'all be having with dealing with children? Like, you know that these kids are immature and not really even on your level to have a long-term relationship with and then when shit do hit the fan, when families really get that involved, right. you gonna be in some hot water. And in the age of technology and text messages, I'm gonna check my kids' text messages until they turn 18. Hmm. So it's always gonna be a parent like me on your ass that might get caught up. So, or get you caught up, I should say. So You know what I do love to love about that? I actually love it. I love that it's, all, it's really never the men fucking the students. It's always the women. <laughs> I like from one set it ain't us. They're always doing that shit. Because yeah. it is wild at the end of the day, but at the same time, this is the double standard and it's just the truth. It's almost like as a, as a man, you know, if you could pull a teacher, it's like kind of like, yo. But at the same time, she's a predator. And and I, at the end of the day, that's the look of it. You're a predator if you fucking pride on kids. And I, can, I try to, again, in any situation, I try to wrap my mind around or put myself in the shoes of right. somebody. So with the teachers, I assume that y'all obviously not getting no play from your partners at home and this student may be one of them little horny young hornballs like I used to be probably shooting game at you and you you going you giving in because your husband ain't giving you that attention or your wife ain't giving you that attention and you know ultimately you just need to do better man like stop trying to stoop to that level of being control a lot of these people just be having control issues too you know, they get a kick out of being in control and they can't be in control at home. So, hey, it's going to always lead to you in handcuffs with a wild ass mugshot. <laughs> so I'd advise you to just wisen up and stay away from them kids, man. Teach them don't touch them. Yeah, teach them don't touch them. I love it. You like a hashtag? Yeah. We're going to come up with a couple of hashtags tonight. Teach them. I'm touch just them. getting started. <laughs> Listen, so my second love tonight, love, before we keep it moving. I don't like shadow banning on social media, man. I don't like the, all of the blocking and the hating. You got to say like, something wild, bro. Yeah, but that ain't my style. And even when, as you know, it's crazy, it's crazy you say that. You told me several times how many times you've got blocked for saying things that's not wild, but they're acting like it's wild. Yeah. Stop it. Stop the, uh, please, remove the yellow tape. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. I don't curse a lot on the show and I'm trying not to, mm -hmm. but tonight, all oh, bets are off. <laughs> Just stop that shit. It's it's ridiculous. Meta, Meta World Peace, Mark Zuckerberg World Peace, whoever's doing it. Just stop. That's it. I say, and to my entrepreneurs out there, we gotta find more clever words to use when we promoting products. Yeah. Cause we getting shadow banned for using words like on sale or discount or you know repost. So you know we having to be a little bit more strategic. So it makes sense now when you see these very videos that's going viral where it's a person that might be sipping coffee, feeding a dog with captions over the screen that have nothing to do with what you see. Don't think that's just people doing that shit randomly. They have understood the algorithm. So, you know, we can't dictate what my man Buddy just talked about. We cannot dictate the algorithms and shadow banning. So we got to be creative. That's my tip of the night. Be creative because they will kill your creation in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah. So, shine the spotlight series. <laughs> Moving forward, twist it into a more of a positive highlighting moment. Who we doing tonight, my brother? I'd love to highlight my brother Rodney Barnes, Annapolis native, writer, screenwriter, social media influencer, Talk to him. book writer. Get him. You know what I mean? He's got it all, man. I love to highlight people that come from my city that I still look up to to this day. And uh, I can't wait until we can get the opportunity to get Rodney on this show. Um, he's written uh, different shows like The Boondocks, mm -hmm. Everybody Hates Chris. Mm -hmm. um, he has a very popular comic book out right now uh, called Philadelphia, and a, a bunch of other series of books that he's released. And if you follow uh, Rodney Bonds on Instagram, 
you can see that he's constantly at a book signing, spreading the knowledge, and he's recently been on a lot of podcasts just sharing some of the back stories about a lot of the movies and shows that he's produced. Another popular show that he recently produced was the show on Showtime uh, about the Lakers. I forget the title. It was on HBO. But, um, HBO, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, you are talking about Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. Um, so if you've been peeping out that and you got HBO, then you've been seeing a Rodney Barnes production. Uh, last year, he received the key to the city in Annapolis. I got a chance to meet him. Me and Buddy spent some time with him that night at the key to the city party where I had the blessings and uh you know possibility of painting a live painting for him which i painted a hand coming through the concrete holding the key to represent him re receiving the key to the key to the city man so yeah shout man. out to rodney Barnes. any notes that you wanted to pull up from rodney i mean you really hit mostly all of it i will be completely honest of my annapolis history i did not know rodney Barnes before that celebration before that moment and then i did my own research on it and to see who he was and what he came from in our city and uh and then realize he went to school with like my aunt and all that. And our city's so small. But um, actually meeting and seeing how graceful he was and how cool he was, it was down to earth. And that's actually like, for every negative I can say about something, I can say a positive. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about social media and stuff, like sometimes I feel like it gives us too much information. Yeah. But then the gems in social media is like, it gives a voice to like writers and producers and people who normally don't want the spotlight. Yeah. And someone like him, who I was, like you said, been doing more podcasts, been more vocal, been more visible. I feel like that comes when you do certain things that most people want from you. I feel like doing the HBO show, people put more of a spotlight on him, and now he's being seen for actually his dope writing ability. Um, you named most of the shows. He also did uh, My Wife and Kids. He's done a few other uh, different shows, American Guards, Marvel's Runaways. I didn't even know he worked on Wu-Tang and American Saga. That was on Hulu, I believe. Mm -hmm. So um, he is someone from our town that uh, we had another conversation. There'll be another episode about like the Mount Rushmore of Annapolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just amazing to meet a person. And like one day, I hope we get the keys to the city. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you're on your way closer to me. But if we do it as the Do It For Love podcast together, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there's people that do stuff from my hometown that's like just not everyday mm -hmm. occurrences. Um, so. Mr. Rodney Barnes, my Steve brother, Brown. we hope to have you on one time when you're back in the town. But in the meantime, between time, this is our version of giving you another key to the city, my brother. Yes, sir. For sure. We got to get you on and talk about that Damon Wayne story, man. Because as Buddy mentioned, with him producing the show My Wife and Kids, you know how I go with the successful people that make it out of our city. It's always a rumor about their journey mm -hmm. or something about them. And I heard a real cool story that I love to hear from you verbatim about your relationship with Damon Wayans and how he invited you out to California when you were embarking on this uh, screenwriting career and then he left you hang to hang and dry to eventually you linking back with, up with him to produce the show My Wife and Kids. So everything that's filled in between that, we would love to hear that story, my brother. Yes, and we don't, we don't say that at all to diminish your career. Even people like myself have been through a lot of ups and downs where people have sold me dreams. And that's one thing that if you are an entrepreneur and you coming up in 2023 and you going into 2024 looking to be successful, already keep your eye out for snakes and people that can sell you dreams. Because then when you on this come up, man, that's something you got to deal with a lot. Facts. I dealt with that in music. I dealt with that in art. It's constantly a thing. To Rodney Bonds. To Rodney Bonds. You trying to be fucked up. I'm going to be shot into every goddamn thing we talk about tonight. So... Now that it's time to, as you watch our show, if you don't watch our show, if you're an audio listener, this is normally when we go into the guest portion of our show. No guest tonight, it's just us for this yearly wrap up. So the who, what, when, why, we're going to do it with us tonight, but we, we are asking questions that have more of a yearly kind of, you know, take, take to it. I'm really interested. I don't think that me and Buddy are going to have the same answers on a lot of this stuff. Probably not. But what I did was write down some cool topics that I want to know from 2023 that what's Buddy's best, and you get to hear what's some of my best. And I'm interested to see you guys in the comments write what was some of your best 2023 moments as well. And can I kick that off for you, brother? Let's get to it, man. So many Cause we all over the place this one, let's go. I love it. And uh, I think, I don't know if you still want to do this because we already a few shots in, but we spoke about this earlier and we said that we both gonna give answers for these subjects and whoever we feel like 
gave the most, the best answer for that 2023 subject, the other person gonna have to take a, take a shot. So and he didn't pull he didn't pull a tall shot. The way I feel is <laughs> that. We can do whatever we want. Rihanna back outside smoking weed. I feel like she had three kids this year, even though she only had one. Yeah. But so yeah, we don't have to take shots of liquor every yeah. time. We can take shots of our well, water. Let's get this shit spicy and all of that. Right. But let's 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 get into it. Talk My first you. question that I want to know is, who was your sexiest female of 2023? Sexiest female. I mean, of it was 23. You know, Instagram and got all of these joints doing the uh, <sighs> JID challenge with the. Camera on the ceiling. I like the angles. Uh, I do. So, who's the sexiest woman of 2023? I'm going to have an unorthodox answer for you. The same person that I said was my love to not love in another episode is also my sexiest woman of 2023. Yeah. Big fucking sexy. Sexy <laughs> Marie. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> he said, say, hey, hey we, this is all being right. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I think it's sexiness. And being who the fuck you are. Right. And as chaotic as I said this year is, I don't think she's a gimmick. I think she's exactly who the fuck Drake said on her song. Her bitch get her name tatted, get her gang tatted before she get her name. I think Sexy Red is sexy because she is who she is. Some people say she look like Young Thug. That's not me saying Young Thug is sexy. But what I am saying, Young Thug do call himself sexy. If you listen to R.B. Young Thug, Woo, he, actually, he, he actually does. But I really, you know, on a serious note, I think it is sexiness and being who the fuck you are. And I actually do think that she's not an ugly girl. Um, but at the same time, you know, my producer, our producer, our video guy is hilarious. I can say what he just did with his head when I said that. But this shit is funny. Either way, Big Sexy is my choice. You want to answer that as well, or do you want to keep it moving? My fiance, Shalice Williams, is the most sexiest woman in 2023. Oh, this nigga sharp. I get, to look at all, I get to look at all of them pictures that no nobody else get to see. That's some sexy shit. Hey, yeah, guess yeah. what? Sexy Red got a sex tape on X. <laughs> so guess what? I got to see the sexiest woman in the world, too. <laughs> I ain't alone. I ain't mad at you. You ain't alone, Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor will forever be sexy. Our producer says Tiana Taylor. I ain't mad at that answer. I can always say so many other women that I could have named. Tiana Taylor is one of the most beautiful women forever. And yeah, shout out to Tiana Taylor. Forever. Yeah. So. Any honorable mentions before we move on? Man, so many, man. Fantasia. I love women. Fantasia, Fantasia has risen on the uh, did, on the uh, on the chart. Cash doll. Shout out to Cash Doll. Shout out to Cash Doll. Shout out to Cash she Doll. She just, you know, give me that that milf. This is vibe. All right, well I throw my honorable mention out there too. Lupita. All right, I like that. I grew to find her beautiful, man. Um like and to say grew to find her beautiful sounds like at one point in time I didn't think she was beautiful. She was but at one point in time it's she wouldn't be like my go-to person when I'm saying something. Yeah. But like a lot of times this year, I say that, and I see that you went through a horrible breakup this year, but I also see that you got with a new man, so I'm happy you found love, my love. I love it. Yeah, so, all right, now that I'm going to one of my questions. What you got? Who is the face of 2023 to you? What you mean by the face? When I say the face of the face, oh, when I say the face of the face, when I say the face of 2023, I mean January to December, from news to creation to popularity, to hate, to just personal, whether you're into them or not, but you couldn't avoid it. Who is the person that when you go back and look at this year, it's not a story that can be told without this person mentioned. And that could be a lot of people. I but if you had to pick one. If, if I had to pick one, I'm going to say 50 Cent. Oh. 50 constantly finds a way to stay in the headlines, whether that's through beefing with somebody mm -hmm. or even his own successful actions. Because I don't want 50 to think that his career is built off dissing people. But I love that we love the same way your career started is the same way you continue to implement your career now. And I got a chance to meet 50 in person. He one of them people where on social media, he's gangster. In real life, he's gangster. But... It's like his artistry and when he meets the fans, real down to earth dude. Out of all of the celebrities I met, 50 was the coolest, man. But 50 constantly stays dominant when it comes to beefing with niggas. 
and calling niggas out as you see him doing with Diddy over the last few weeks. Um, <laughs> last few weeks, last decade. I'm sorry, he last always decade. Fucking and, and I just seen recently he was in Thailand, he was in uh, Abu Dhabi making his headline around the world. I think I was the final show of the final which made tour. Also got me buddy got a chance to do a lot of shit together, bro. Like we got to see 50 Cent on that tour. And now to see him in Abu Dhabi in Thailand where people love him to death and praise him. I mean he's the underrated go. Yeah. He's the underrated Sorry goal. to be long with it, but who you no, know? You, who your face listen, this this ain't rapid fire questions. We can be as long with it as we want. Pause. I feel like a nigga might take that the wrong way. Um Kanye West, man. Yo, that's your man too. I love that dude. And I'm gonna tell you why I think he's the person of the year and not the over target. This, to me, I already said several times, I think 2023 was a year of chaos. I think we're uh, in a lot of turmoil in a lot of different ways. And I think he's a perfect example of how to stay afloat when everything seems to be burning down around you. Um, I don't even remember, like, the I, I remember in my group text with my ex-podcast homies, but still my brothers, the Unbiased Podcast, Shev and me, some of my brothers, um, when we be talking about person of the year, I think I was saying Kanye for a lot of the year, up until a certain point when he went missing. To me, I always look at that like MVP voting. When you go missing for like games and months, you can't get a person of the year. Yeah. But even in them going missing, turning into no shoe Kanye, just walking around other countries and doing stuff and just popping up with his new wife, I feel getting like- Getting head on the boat. Getting head on the boat. <laughs> Turning all of the fucking companies that he worked with pretty much against him on purpose because he's been exposed in industries Started in the last year with all of the people in masters and marketing and giving his artists their shit back Then it went into Adidas then it went into when I wake up. I'm gonna go Defcon 30 on people all of that shit turned him into the villain more than ever like this was worse than Taylor Swift my mind my man was out of here I don't even know if he was gonna come back from this one I really didn't but he's fucking back and the music is about to come and I don't know if half these people gonna clear the fucking samples and shit that he's doing this album might never drop but the fact that he is back in the fold to me he is the person of the year and be instead of coming to check and he still got things done on the level when he got his brand and his name back and he's about to re-release Everything. Yeah. I just feel like he's the person of the fucking decade. He's the person of everything. <laughs> you I know, love that dude. You know I give him a hard time with Kanye. <laughs> My criticism with that nigga is when it comes to being a record label head, he's not the best person. Oh. And and that don't that don't encompass the whole Kanye. That's just a small portion of him. That's almost just like Michael Jordan, one of the best basketball players of all time, one of the best entrepreneurs, but one of the worst NBA owners of all time. Kanye West, two, one of the people that we mentioned, he single-handedly kind of fucked that person's career up because of the same shit that you said. Being chaotic, going around <laughs> being self-centered about his own issues, forgetting that everything that he projects <laughs> affects the people under him. Tiana Taylor, Pusha T. Two people who genuinely love that nigga that really didn't want to throw him under the bus but understood that they kind of fucked up they limelight because of what he had going on. So Kanye, that's my only downgrade of you, but I will say you are genius when it comes to keeping your name in tabloid social media publications, and you are genius when it comes to clothing and it comes to you. You are fucking genius when it comes to you, but when it comes to other people, I wouldn't trust you with my career in your hands, nigga. That's what I gotta say. I was gonna rebuttal you and go back and forth, but I don't want to I got a good fucking point. I don't want to be tight. No, it was good. It was good. I was gonna go ahead at one point, but I was like, ah, you know. Because I want to give him his props. No, he, 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 he definitely sometimes presses the button, and that button can fuck up other people's shit. And I can't be a fan to the point to where I can't acknowledge that shit. So, you're right. Because there's people like Tiana Taylor that she has such In that a sense, organic following and pushing T people who really have loved him since the clips up until now right. they've been waiting for that moment for them to finally drop their solo albums and unfortunately because of situations with Kanye right. it just either put them in situations where they had to shut shit down right. or it just didn't fully get the promotion it deserved so but now since you said it again now I gotta kind of rebuttal it okay. where I will say he is a great executive I feel like 
a lot of the people that he had signed and he put on display in a bigger joint, they were with other people at first, but why did they have more success on the Kanye? Like Pusha T was a country brand in Virginia, Pharrell, so as crazy. And Tiana Taylor was discovered by, by Pharrell. They had more success with Ye. When Ye production and Ye focusing on you is great. It's just that when he get in him mode, what he might do for himself, never before this the, the uh, DEFCON 30 statement, that one messed up the brand. Prior to that, it normally only put a those eye on him. And that's why I agree with you. I feel like he is one of the better executives. I think, honestly, it's two people that we talked about. I think 50 and Kanye are two of the better rapper turned executives that we've ever seen. When you really, really think about all the stuff that's said about, that's been said about Jay-Z as an executive, that's been said about Diddy as an executive, two people that never get shouted out that I want to shout out, D&Y from Rough Riders. I've never heard an artist on Rough Riders say that they've been jerked by them or anything. And they put real people in, in the front of the fucking, like, world. So shout out to them because I don't feel like they ever get their credit. And they never wanted to be in a spot. Yeah. And that's like the Diddy's, the Suge Knights. Yeah. Nights. They literally was cool with playing. So I got to give credit to, like, the 50s and that, the top dog entertainments and all that. So that's why I give their credit. But you're right about his actions hurting his people. And we don't want men buddies opinion to be... All, all is be all. Comment below who your per face of 2023 was. Move all right, that was my question, so you can go back one of yours. Um, biggest inspiration of 2023 to you? Biggest inspiration of 2023. It could be an inspirational moment, person who was. Um, watching other people's success always inspires me, but I'm gonna honestly say my biggest inspiration of 2023 is probably gonna be Donovan, bro. Um, my son is only getting older and stronger and more smarter, which I've seen in this year with age 16. And with the autism spectrum and being nonverbal, which he's like, it's crazy I have to say nonverbal because that's what the book would say. The book would say he's nonverbal, but that boy talks, bro, and he can say stuff. So it's not to me like he doesn't know direction and he doesn't, and he doesn't understand. I've seen this year more than ever, that man is a menace. Yo, he understands what the fuck is going on out here almost too well. Mm -hmm. Like, the things that he's done in 2023 is like, God damn. But that also lets me know that more than ever, I need to be on my shit. A little cheat code that I'll say out loud that honestly is kind of pitiful that I used to put on myself. I used to not have to go hard on things. It's like, shit, I ain't got to pay for college education. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to like prepare for certain things because he's not really going to have to do it. It's like, I got to prepare for life. He's all
she's now going to be a fashion icon because the way they're dressing her and the way they're presenting her as a queen that she, that she should have. So she has that redemption story. And I love redemption stories and I love um, underdog stories. And I think Fantasia has come back and she's nominated for a Oscar. And it's not many of us that had that, you know, under our belt. So, you know, yeah. She is inspirational. Shout out to Fantasia. Yeah, to double to even to double speak on that, on top of her talent naturally in the acting field now being uh, you know, respected. I think that it's like her song, When I See You, is like one of the most underrated TikTok party bops that I'm a host, I'm an event host. Like, yo, that song at any moment, any time, you'll get anyone in the room, regardless of look or stature. To be singing and feeling the love, so shout out to Fantasia Barino, man. We keep you know? we keep receipts. Let's not forget that uh, people said she couldn't read at one point, right? Yeah, she did. Could she know at that time? I don't know if she could or not. She could, I don't want to write on this. But, but let's talk about what's going on now. She, but she's murdering them now. She's murdering them now, baby. We talk about acting, right? Yeah, that's fact. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. I, get, I see what you're doing. We gotta learn yes. how to read the script. People talk shit about Floyd Mayweather, right? But don't say shit about him now when he comes out speaking so fluently and really gracefully explaining anything that you ask him. Man, you and make somebody that you talk group. shit about talk couldn't shit. read, talk now shit. Fantasia doing acting roles, but she had to read the script. I love it. She got it knocked down. Shout out to Fantasia, baby. I never doubted you. I never like to be the person to talk shit about people that can't read because we all understand circumstances or shit that you've been through. So props to you. I'm glad you're on a whole nother level. Now tell him read that checkbook. Let's go. Huh. He got a fiance, but it sounds like you his sexy man, Fantasia. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. <laughs> all right. So I got another. Uh, you got one of yours ready or you want me to go? Best allegation of 2023. <laughs> best allegation. That sounds wicked. <laughs> I got the best allegation. Um, best allegation of 2023. I'm going to, I feel like an easy one would be Diddy. He would never say his mask. That's what I mean, because I feel like it's the latest one, it's the easiest one. that so many people came out after him, but like, his shit was like, the, it like started it all to finish the year off. But I'm going to say best allegation of 2023. The craziest, however you want to look at it. I'm going to go with uh, the closing of the, um, I like to call it the COVID case. Meg Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez. Oh. I would say that is the biggest allegation or the craziest allegation. How do you ask the question? Because it finally came to an end. I don't know if anybody knows the exact time when it started. I'm not even going to go Google it. I feel like COVID started at 2020 and that happened because I was watching Tory Lanez lives. I was watching him and Megan's relationship grow. I seen all this shit live and I seen it go left. So. I didn't see it go left. I didn't watch it that night. But I'm like saying, like, I'm, we all woke up to that news. So I would say that one, man, because it's like, man, I got 10 years, bro. Tory Lanez really got, <laughs> like, I don't even want to laugh at that shit. But, like, Tory Lanez really got 10 years. And I don't know what happened. Right. Because one thing I am is I try to stay even kill. Yeah. And we can't act like one moment we trust the judicial system and one moment we don't. <laughs> We know laws is fucked up. And when they say guilty or not, half the time they wrong, half the time they not. And in this situation, we do not know who shot Meg Thee Stallion. I was not old enough to watch the show Dallas, but I grew up with my motherfucking family members watching soap <laughs> operas. And who shot JR? Do niggas still know? Does anyone know who shot JR? I don't even know who the fuck he is. JR Smith is the only JR I know. Right. But well, I will get to the point of saying that the biggest allegation to me would be that one. Because. <laughs> fucking Tory Lanez really got 10 years, bro. Yeah. Like, that really happened. And Megan Stallion is now back. And just seeing the reception to Bungalows and seeing the reception to her other track, which I thought was hard as fun, the rapping tip. I don't know if she'll ever get back to where she was. As, like, she was, to me, possibly the number one female rapper. I feel like Lotto took her spot. Mm -hmm. And that's another conversation we might have later on, but. Yo, this guy's hilarious. Yo, T. Yeah, hold on, before I let Buddy just disrespect niggas and say the only JR he knows is JR Smith. Shout Who out to JR Ryder, man. JR Ryder, what's Oh, man, let me know. And shout, shout out to JR Ryder, aka Baby Jordan, one of the slam dog contests, bro. <laughs> Junior, 
But Jennifer, for my life is Another yeah, honorable, honorable mention man. allegation of 2023, man. Marcus Pippen and Larissa Pippen. Oh. Because it started out as a rumor, and a lot of people ain't think that you had that 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 G brother to pull Larissa Pippen. But I knew you had it in you. Because if Future could get her at the uh, Scotty A say hello and shake my man Future up, I knew you could get her. So, yeah, that's another allegation of the year, man. They about to get married, and Jordan about to be the best man, whether he agrees to it or not. Yeah. Shut up, you know Marcus Pippen, big dog. I don't care about that shit so much. I ain't even <laughs> fucking say that her name is Lawson. Yeah. I'll call her Larissa. Okay. Call her as Larissa for the rest of the shit. Because they give a goddamn about Larissa Pippen and goddamn Marcus Jordan. You're a very yeah, bad allegation. Yes, but that is true, though. It's your turn, though. All right. So, I'll get back in more to see if I can get a more of a... More that sort of wild, love, wild, wild moment out of it. What 2023 moment is the most memorable to you? It could be on the public sector from like a celebrity moment or something that happened in the world, or it could just be in your personal life. But what is the most memorable 2023 moment for Mr. Spitfire? Most memorable 2023 moment, hands down, is the war between Iran and Palestine, correct? That is correct. And, <clears throat> oh, I mean, from what I've read, this isn't a war that's new. I'm sorry, that's not correct. Israel. Israel, I'm sorry. Israel and Palestine, please forgive me. It's not a war that has just miraculously out of nowhere came about. From what I've read on the brief research that I did do, this is a war that's been going on for many years. Decades. And it's about freedom and what one country is allowed to do opposed to the other. And for us to, in the year of social media and us getting a front eye witness to a lot of this, this is the most that I've ever seen in my life. Children on social media every day in different ways being held by their parent, parents, dead, bloody, ex, you know, blown up to pieces. And he may. Uh, trying to survive everything that you could think of. And we not bad an eye about it. It's because it, it's so much other negativity going on, and it's not in our homeland that we kind of overlook it. Right. We might give a comment here that, but that shit is crazy. Like it's nuts. It's, it's the craziest nuts. thing I've just seen since 9/11 and Katrina. It's nuts. Where we literally watching people die in front of us. It's really, it's really, really bad. Like I can't even really go too deep on it because I feel like when law, when life is lost, and then it's, it's actually. Good choice. The episode is called For the Love of Life. If you can sit and watch and see anything from any side, I don't even care if you, we all have to pick sides in life. You all have to stand with something. You married man and you know your wife is wrong arguing at the front fucking desk or somewhere, you can't sit there and really convert her at that moment. You always you get in the car to do it. You gotta stand on the side. And in that side you're wrong as fuck. You should be taking the side of the person. But you got to stand with your people. Mm -hmm. And in this instance of, it could be war, it could be contracts, it could be anything. Because to me, I like to put everything, I always say, when people say, oh, that's apples and oranges, it's both fruit. you just acting like you care about one more than the other. It's the same thing. It's just certain things have a higher level of care than others. And in this situation, it's inhumane, whatever side you're on, to just be attacking people and murdering people for control of land, for control of money, for control of anything. Because when you kill someone, there's no getting that back. But I don't want to go too deep into that, but you're right. Um, to act like that is not one of the biggest moments of 2023 would be crazy because yeah, sure so. that war is so bad that it made like the Ukraine-Russia thing ain't happening. When that is also happening, it started in February, I believe. So, uh, yeah, man, a lot of things happen in the world, and it's a war going on in our own country that just no one ever speaks of. Um, so, Did you have a different one? Uh, my most memorable 2023 moment? What did I write down? Oh, yeah, I'm more wholesome than mine. I'm going to say Disney World. I went to Disney World in February with my family, and I say this is a big moment because I've been to Disney World maybe five times in my life. Never with my father. My father don't go places. He don't like doing shit. I've spoken to my father so many episodes. He'd rather wash cars than come to my high school basketball games. <laughs> He'd rather, this is all facts, he'd rather cut grass than go out and eat food at a restaurant. But if you bring something back, he wants it. Um, that's just his style. That's who he is as a person. He's a country boy. That's who he was raised to be, and that's who he is. 
So um, just having him in Disney World, having him walking around, seeing shit. I'm following the type of person that you know you've been around me, see something you gonna say. It. Like we took him to one of the like outdoor parks, man. Like for hours straight, he's like, they got roller coasters outside. Like, what the fuck have you thought roller coasters been your whole life? Damn. Outdoor parks are outside, my nigga. Like, your boyfriend. And I don't even know if he even mean half the shit he say at the time. This is stuff he says out loud, then he says it to like a random like white person walking down the street. And they'll be like, your father's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what the fuck? Or you don't even know this nigga. Wow. But I love that about him because he's so authentic. I think people love people don't like it all the time, but people love spurts of just real. Mm -hmm. Because they deny it in their life so much from work to their family to other things, people deny what really makes them happy. And sometimes chaos makes people happy. Yeah. Just a little bit of like, God damn, I needed that espresso shot. I needed that moment to just feel like alive. Yeah. Cause that's what this is about for the love of life. And uh, my father will make me feel alive if you have his presence. So uh, yeah, what's next for you? Any more questions? I was, right five? I, was I, was say, five questions. I was just ready to say, we've been answering some good questions in detail, but I would love to get into rapid fire. All right. And still continue on some of our best in 2023, just not giving ourselves too much time to think about it right. and giving more straight up answers. All right, best. since I've been drinking, you want my nicest rapid fire question first or my most ratchet one I think I got first? Ratchet first. Ratchet yeah. first? Uh, yeah, ratchet. That's what we in. Yeah, uh, ratchet. Yeah, ratchet. Yeah, chaos. All right, let's get straight to it. What's the best thing you ate in 2023 besides pussy? Catfish and eggs, bro. Catfish and eggs. Catfish I, was in Atlanta for the, I was in Atlanta for the Falcons Commanders game. Catfish and eggs and together? Yes. Catfish, mm. eggs, and bacon. That shit was fire. Catfish and That's bacon. That's the best combo I never had before. Catfish, eggs, and bacon. Best thing besides pussy this year? Yes. All right, I like Hands it. Hands down. All right. What's um, yours? You wanted me to ask you the same thing, or I'm just going to give you a question, different question? Give me your shit. Uh, best comedian of 2023. My best comedian of 2023, I'm going to have to say a mixture of things. On the social media platforms, I love Desi Banks and them. I love, uh, with, uh, I ain't going to say his one because I'm going to ask you the same thing. You can say him. I love uh, what my boy is doing. What's his goddamn name? Uh, Drewski. Drewski, yeah. The fucking record label shit. Everything he doing. People still don't know Birdman really took that nigga chain or not. Like, I just love that sense of the comedy. It's like the allure. I feel like with so much social media shit and what we see in our day and age and having so much access, it's not a lot of allure anymore. So on um, that. And then on a major level things, I love Chris Rock capitalizing off of what the fuck happened to him on the Oscar stage. I will say I'm probably more of a Will Smith fan than a Chris Rock fan. I've never really been a huge fan of Chris Rock's comedy, but I love the fact that Chris Rock's always been different and consistent. And he's been a lot of the first to do things that people don't give him credit for. So the fact that he spun that, shot him in Baltimore, Jada hometown, did other tours with Kevin Hart, uh, the joint when Dave Chappelle popped up at the show, everybody was there. Like... Chris Rock had a great year, and Kevin Hart just transitioning the platforms that he has and all of his networking uh, with the different podcasts, the different shows. I feel like those are the comedians that stand out to me. You know who my favorite great. comedian was? Who? Jada Pinkett. Because the way she did Will <laughs> Smith was pure fucking comedy. And I feel sorry for you, brother, but trust me, everybody was laughing at you this year because of Jada. And I don't even think she a comedian, but all of that shit was pure funny. Damn. All right, well, I'll say the other one. I thought yeah, they're still together. Oh, yeah. And they still together. Funny Marco. I was going to shout you out too. I thought he was going to say Funny Marco, but yeah, shout out to you, Talk Funny Marco. Later. You yeah. did major things. Yeah, shout out to Funny Marco because I did want to highlight him. Unique style of comedy, the way that he dresses in bum clothes and don't care about what the guest says. He constantly trumps them with his, his dry humor and antics where he set it up for different questions. Shout out to Funny Marco. You got hella uh, potential to reach, bro. Dope. For sure. All right, another rapid fire question. All right, you could think out of context of your children if you like, because you do have a son and a daughter, or you can just think if you had a makeup son and a daughter. If your son and daughter were old enough to date these people, one of them are back on the streets and the other one is in a relationship, I believe, who would you fear more for, your son or your daughter in this instance? Dating Lori Harvey or dating Common? Lori Harvey. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Because even though Coleman is... Coleman is a sniper. So I had to see a threat the other day, yo. You know what Coleman's song? dangerous. You know what song I think of when I, I think about Coleman? The song that Jada Kiss got called Catch and Release. Because he want to catch you. He like one of them fishermen that fish 
while hold the camera, the fish up in the camera, play with you, look at you, and then throw you back in the water. That's a calm. Man. That's actually a good analogy. Of that. <laughs> so how's Lori any different? Because we never know who breaks up with who in any instances. And she always really seems to be happy. I, I, I honestly think that men, women, anybody that follows Lori Harvey, we really be thinking that she probably found the right one this time, and she fools us all every fucking time. But we giving her the credit to fool them. We don't know. Because my man Dipson seems of all the breakups. Dempsey don't even seem like he's tripping. But you honestly think they was gonna work for a little while? I think every relationship gonna work. You know I'm hoping. <laughs> you know I'm optimistic. I love love. I, this is love for love. I always think love gonna work. Tell the shit don't. I, don't I be rooting for a group. I, listen, I be rooting for everybody, bro. I be, the same to time Paul Leon. I be trying to put a parlay on a lot of y'all relationships. Uh, how long it's gonna last? Because I swear, if I had put a parlay on Dempsey and uh, Lori, I definitely would have said three to six months. That shit lasted like seven. I'm was it seven? Nah, man. Nah, I probably wasn't nah. seven. Nah. But hey, number one bites the dust. Stay away from Lori. Next question? It's me. Who asked that one? Uh, what was the question? I asked that one. I asked, so would you do it or something? Would you feel? Okay. So you'd be more for, feel for your son. Alright, I got a weird one for you. I ain't scared of Lori. Smartest person in 2023. Smart in any aspect you want to think of. Smartest person in 2023. Made some smart moves or just that brilliant surprise you in 2023. Smartest person in 2023. If I had to think on one, do you have one already? If I had to uh, think on one, because I'm going to have to think on one. T, you got one? Smartest person in 2023. What do you think of this like a round table? My smartest person while them two guys are thinking about it, Mark Zuckerberg. Like I said, he's constantly forever evolving, making deals that connects back to his initial conception of Facebook and if I'm not mistaken, Instagram, any cell phone app, anything that comes out is all connected to Facebook. He's constantly battling with Elon Musk who would have been my second choice, but I put Mark Zuckerberg above him but for many reasons. So Mark Zuckerberg is my smartest person in 2023. I really don't know. I might have to spin a block on that. I really don't know who my smartest person would be because I feel like in different sectors I could give different answers. Um, you know, I feel like I can give Kanye for any answer in the world because <laughs> I do think he's a smart man to like get out of the things he gets in. I don't even think this should be playing or orchestrated sometimes, but it seems like he always falls on his feet. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to come back and spin a block on that. I already know. Who my, uh, I, you want me to take a shot because I couldn't answer? Yeah, man. You, you just suggested it. I don't know. And then I ask you my next question. Okay, right back to it. What, which rap line got stuck in your head more, if at all, in 2023? If you see me, you try to see what's up, ski, or rip me out the plastic, I've been acting brand new. Before you even gave me the options, I was ready to grab this bottle. <laughs> you don't see no labels on it, right? Because we done ripped it out of the plastic and it's acting brand new. That was the line that I heard from old people all the way down to fucking little kids. Someone almost died trying to get rid of the plastic. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> almost died from that. Hey, shit got real doing that channel. And shout out to Lotto because I actually was going to ask you who your favorite, M favorite female mm -hmm. MC was. And when you asked me who mine was going to be, it was going to be Lotto because of that line he just mentioned. And it's just many, when I think about female rap, Lotto just had not only the most impressive bars, but it was still on commercial songs. So we repeat repeatedly hearing the songs and she's just been spitting. And I watched her from the show with Jermaine Dupri as a kid and I'm still impressed by how she continues to grow. So shout out Lotto. No, absolutely. And I also use that moment to give a special shout out to Ice Spice. and. Female rap as a whole, I would say that it'd be hard to argue that any people, any body in the genre was bigger than women this year. January to December. You got Drake. You got shit. After Drake, Kendrick Lamar was last year. J. Cole's been just dropping features, no album. Who has been popping more than the ladies? Like Nicki just sold what, 240, 260? to close out and she's been quiet 
I know, I know T, but I love me some Barbie, and I love me some Nicki, and I think she is one of the greatest female rappers of all time, if not the greatest, and it's hard to argue that she isn't. With just the bars, the consistency, the brand, the fans, everything that she created from the ground up, nobody was fucking with her. But, to so not make it just about Nicki. The sexy reds is already spoke on. I ain't even gonna talk about the Greek and the Menaces and all of the other, the Erica Banks. So all, it's so many rappers. Shout out Scarlett, man. Scarlett, the New York Lola Brooks. It's been so many women rappers this year, they popping more than the niggas. Overall, all across the board, even the people like the, even though I felt like she had a rough year fucking with that tour, the Rico Nasties, the other creatives, just these brilliant women. And uh, that are doing so much in the genre that literally they never really were pushed to the forefront. Like I remember in the 90s you had Fox, you had Kim, Lauren Hill was like the anomaly to come through and take it all, win the uh, Grammys and all that. But man, shout out to the, re the women in hip hop, man. It's y'all year for sure. So, big shout out to y'all. You know I love all of y'all. For sure. So, my next question. I just was waiting for you to finish that topic. I've been holding that shit for a long time. No, do you think? But, and I wanted to get a time check real quick to see how I thought we And that was actually dope that we spoke about female rap because closing out this episode as we get closer to midnight, hitting into 2024, huh? let's not forget that we separated 50 years of hip hop this year. Yes. I cannot forget that. At all. So, what is your greatest hip hop 50 celebration of this year? Oh man, I would just say that the fact that hip hop was celebrated in the award shows, that it was celebrated in the art exhibits, the museums, that it was celebrated in um, different commercials, it was celebrated in different aspects of hip hop uh, cultural, like in like magazines. Like certain things that was like, if you're not privy to it, you wouldn't know. Right. But if you're following hip hop things, it was so many different things released. So I would say that's my favorite moment. I want, I, I think I know what you're going to say, so I'm not going to say that. But just the celebrations overall, what was yours? My biggest hip hop 50 moment was watching hip hop artists from the West, the South, and the East from when hip hop started all the way up until now, all performing at Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the same stadium that if you go back and watch the Jackie Robinson movie 48. titled 48 with Chadwick Boseman. 24, 24, 48. No, it's 48. 48. 48. <clears throat> if you go back and watch that movie, it's one of the home runs when Jackie Robinson either hits a home run or he's stealing bases. He's called a nigga and all types of nasty things at his time at that stadium. So to fast forward now when we celebrate 50 years of hip hop to see our artists from our culture stand on the stage at a baseball stadium with a packed crowd of all types of people, curse, really showcasing our culture, talking that shit from fuck the police to even lyrics where we may shout out Yankees players or different athletes that just shows you the transition of how far we've come. And that was a monumental moment for Hip Hop 50. And that's my highlight from that, from everything that happened. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that moment and go all over the place real quick with just showing us so much love. This is Do It For The Love Podcast. This is an opportunity for us to show love to all entities, all ethnicities, all people from different industries. And this is gonna be my moment to talk about the things that I love. For one, with that, shout out to Nas, Mass Appeal. They put together that Yankee Stadium okay. cultural hip hop experience for Hip Hop 50. I wanted to shout out to Hip Boy who I think is my producer of the year. Two Nas albums, multiple singles on other big albums throughout the year. Amazing work. I'm a huge, huge fan. And I love what you've done with your father. Your father did anywhere between a five to ten year deal. I don't know the exact numbers. You just executive produced, I think for the first time ever, the first father-son album produced by the son. Like, that's amazing to me. Like, to me, that is like for the love of life. That's a full circle moment. Your father has missed most of his success. And he got to come home and see his son just be the be that nigga. So to me, that's amazing. I also want to just highlight all the different entrepreneurs, all the different people that have, that we haven't had a chance to work with yet, that we hope to work with in the future. We want you, man. Dude, this is my moment to plug out what we're doing here. Pause. We took it some time. You said pause. Pause. What I say? We want you, man. 
No. I said, <laughs> I just saw it. Just fucking with that. Man, this nigga here. Yeah. <laughs> so listen here. Shout out to y'all, man. This nigga fucked me up. Man, I was trying to get to my love for the people and shit. But no. Uh, <laughs> on, a, on a strong note, yeah. Shout out to the Is What It Is Network, man. You shook the fucking sports world up this year. Shout out to a fresh take on sports. Fresh take on everything in the industry. Um, I can keep on rapping and on. What else you want to shout out now? Like, it's our moment. What time we got? We have a minute and 29. Before we hit that. Before we hit a, sh before we hit a countdown. Who you want to shout out? Anybody special? Charleston White, man. You've been getting your ass beat randomly for the last couple of weeks from all the shit you stood on over 2023. <laughs> Standing on business almost got you laying on business. Bro. I ain't a prize so, fight. I'm a surprise fight. <laughs> Niggas been bobbing up on your I'm ass. Surprising you. Hey, you got to stay strong in 2024, bro. I constantly say I support your message. Sometimes when you're actually talking sense. But keep your head on the swivel, bro. We don't need as much crazy shit as you say. We don't need you losing your life in 2024. So stay strong, my brother. And listen, LeBron James, all-time leading scorer that happened in 2023. Motherfucking king. See him in the back, baby. We shot him, man. I want to shout out everybody that did something in 2023 that, that they did not do in 2022. When we count down, that shot is for you. We want to show love to everybody that watched us. We don't shout out all the viewers and all the do it for the lovers after the countdown. But I just want to say 2023, I'm blessed. More life, more blessings. It is great to be here. We are at 20 seconds. At 10, we gonna count down for all the door for the lovers, all the viewers, all, all the subscribers. All the people sitting home dressed in your, your, your casuals. That's how we dress today for you. We at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Do it for the love. Happy New Year. You know the vibes, Happy New Year. Man. You know us, man. We outside. We just wanted to make sure we was entertaining anybody that was kicking it in the crib. You might be on the church side of things and you feel like going out might put you in a bad situation. I feel you. So much crazy shit been going on in 2023 that you got to be on the safe side. So shout out to you if you're home watching us right now. I won't be PC for the moment. Put that goddamn Welch's grape down in church. Or no, actually, pick up the Welch's grape. Pour up. Put the Bible down for a moment. Couple, and celebrate life. Y'all got the old mistletoe still hanging up from Christmas. And my favorite it. couple of 2023 was Will and Jada. The motherfuckers is together forever. And I love the fact that they just stay consistent. That's real we'll life love right there. Shout out on that because that's what the fuck Will needed after all that shit Jada did a shot. They do it for the love at the end of the day. One time, bro. My nigga. Let's go. We all on one. You know, how many times do you see what I'm about to say? My brother, I love you. Love you too, bro. I love what you are. Uh, the battery you put in my back. As far as just being a creative, oh, as far as working, oh, the battery in the back? <laughs> How the fuck is that possible? Which one get electrocuted? <laughs> How? How? I just wanted to shut you off. Go ahead, go ahead. Get to your speech, bro. But no. <laughs> your drive, everything you do, as far as like the day in, day out work, I've spent a lot of time with you. Probably more than my like everyday homies yeah. in 2023. Right. We spent a lot of time together creating shit and working. And I just want to say, man, like, appreciate your people. I appreciate the people you create with. I appreciate the people that you inspire to be like. And appreciate the people that inspire you. Because one day you might be working with them. One day you might be right next to them and they might be looking at you like, shit, you done gave me a few years in my shit. You done made me feel more motivated. Because a year ago, 2022, what, December 2022? We might have already been starting this, but let's say September 2022. I didn't think me and Sal would be growing in the level that we've grown to, even though we grew up together. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful for that, and I'm grateful for that. And I feel like we have something right here that's only going to get better. So before I shout out everybody else, I wanted to shout out to you. You already took your shot? Yeah. I'm going to take this one. And while Buddy's taking his shot, I want to commend him for the great work he's been doing. Just career-wise, buddy, you know, is at the dental school. He's juggling being a host in all different types of venues and atmospheres. And I just happened to be at a recent event where I seen buddy host, you know, and he was hosting an event that showcased a lot of younger talent coming up. And I told him how exceptional well he did and how he continues to uh, just amaze me with his talent on the mic. So shout out you, brother. I, I told him starting the show, I want, you, want to be very clear even though I had a background in podcasting already, I really look up to Buddy and the way he is 
killed his communications major that he went to school for and he used it in this show. And I told him I'm gonna be leaning on you a lot to carry this show, whether it be the introduction, you you doing the introduction to people coming on, buddy, you're a hell of a host and doing your thing and I hope you continue to grow in your field and we gonna continue to grow here and do it for the love. Shout out Atelier Baltimore for constantly Atelier T meeting our last minute deadlines in here late. He be rubbing his eyes, working all day long. He got fashion shows going on, but he always makes time to make sure we, we get our guests in here and we getting our shit produced. So shout out Atelier of Baltimore. We love what you've done for us up to this point. We continue to look forward to work with you and all of the guests that we've had on so far. Absolutely. This is still season one, 2024. We got a lot more great guests coming up. Shout out to everybody that has put in inquiries. If you want to be on the show, make sure you go to www.doitforthelove.com. Scroll down and hit that inquiry form. And where else can they uh, subscribe? And oh, man. You know, the Do It For The Love pod. That's on Instagram. You got Do It For, Always For, Do It For The Love podcast on Facebook. Same thing on TikTok. Same thing on Twitter. I believe so. Um, and also, I want to send a special shout out to all of our Do It For The Lovers. We need the views, we need the subscriptions, we need the likes, we need the shares. At the end of the day, we are the people on the platform, we are the people you see, but we're nothing without the fans. Everything we need to grow in this space, to get monetization, to continue to give you the best product we could possibly give you, we need y'all to, to tap in, man, on all of the platforms. If you don't want to be on YouTube, you on Apple Pod, follow. If you are on Spotify, like, share. Go for it. One of our goals for 2024 is to get a thousand subscribers. Okay. And there's no better way for you guys to help us out to get a thousand subscribers by sharing, liking this, sending this to one of your homeboys, your family members. I said. Now let them know that this ain't just your average podcast. This is dope. We informing the people about the news. We constantly uh, shouting out good entrepreneurs, whether black, white, green, purple. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing in the DMV and the surrounding country, we want you on the show. We want to highlight you. And that's what it is. Listen, before we get out of here, one more time, I want to say thank you to every guest that we've had thus far. Wesley, Devin, Flawless, Fred, Miss Carter, who will be coming soon. That's a special one we got for y'all. I ain't going to elaborate more on that. Also, I want to talk about, before we get out of here, all of our Shine the Light recipients, all our sponsor highlight people. In 2024, we're moving forward with really getting sponsors, with really getting people that want to put their thoughts into the show and be a part of what we're doing here. We're coming for everything. We want to be one of the best podcasts in 2024. We're just getting started, and we're far from being done. My brother, shake your hand on camera. Yes, sir. It's all love, and more life, more blessings. And you know how we're going to close it out. With a shot. Hopefully, y'all got your shots ready with us. See, got his shot ready in the back. We already did the countdown. We are officially in the 2024. It's January 1st. Stay positive. Stay connected to people that's going to inspire you. Stay connected to your kids. This is the year where you need to monitor them and make sure you give them the inspiration that they need to be successful. And like I said, surround yourself with good people. And that's all I'm going to say. Hmm. More life, more blessings. Shots to success. And we out, you. And do it for the love. Let's go.